Welcome to the latest roundup of news and polls from Ipsos Mori. And this month we've got our latest figures in on politics in Britain. And they show that although Rishi Sunak remains the most popular politician in Britain, uh, his ratings are starting to drift down a bit, but not as quickly as those of Boris Johnson and the Health Secretary Matt Hancock, both of which have fallen markedly since July. And it does look as though the government is taking some flack for events of August, particularly the uh, events surrounding exam results. So the Conservative Party is now neck and neck with the Labour Party in terms of favourability and has more people that dislike it than the Labour Party. This, I think, is a reminder that eventually political gravity always returns for governments. What it means in the long term for politics in Britain, of course, it's far too soon to tell. Uh, Back in 2012, Labour was 12 percentage points ahead of the Conservatives in the polls. And yet, of course, by 2015, they lost a general election. So the fact that the parties are closer in the polls, the fact that the Prime Minister's popularity has suffered in August, um, doesn't necessarily mean that politics in Britain has completely changed. But it is interesting to see these ratings of the government drifting downwards and they will want to see changes and more um, stimulus and activity during the autumn. We've also released our first uh, monthly set of antibody testing results that look at the presence of antibodies in the population. And we found 3.4 million people, about 6% of people, have already been infected by mid-July. It's not evenly spread around the country with people in London uh, most likely to carry antibodies, lowest in the southwest and also people who work in healthcare and in care homes far more likely to have been exposed to the virus, perhaps unsurprisingly, but also people from black, Asian and minority ethnic backgrounds being much more likely to have been exposed and people in more deprived neighbourhoods. And in terms of the impacts of the virus generally on society, uh, you know, you can start to see who might be suffering more than others. When we ask the public who's suffered most, they tend to focus on older people, but also people from ethnic minorities. And they're very very clear about that. They Only 10% think the young have suffered most, despite the impacts on employment and incomes of younger people, and despite young people actually being most negative about the direction of the country. But overall, the public choose older people and ethnic minorities as suffering much more, and I think they might be right. We're running a webinar uh, with age uh, with, with the Centre for Aging Better um, and Anna Dixon, who runs that uh, charity, and people from the public health community on the 15th of September at two o'clock, looking not just at the impact overall in society, but in particular on the 50 to 70 year olds who, if in the recession that is likely to come, lose their jobs, may find it very hard to get another one. So um, do join us then. Overall, in general, when we look at it by gender, we find that women are suffering more than men, uh, much more likely to say that they're finding it hard to stay positive. And importantly, when we look at mothers who are working and trying to combine their work with childcare, and I think this is important as we go into the autumn and schools do or don't reopen, childcare does open or doesn't reopen, uh, working mums far more likely to say that their mental health has suffered compared to working fathers. And it's a reminder that women bear a lot of the responsibility for childcare and domestic activity. And they've had to combine that with work during the lockdown. So 44% of working mums, only 28% of working dads, saying it's having a negative impact on their mental health. We've also looked at how Britain as a whole is ready to deal with the fact that if the virus doesn't arrive any time soon, and what it shows is that the British will grin and bear it, or grit their teeth and bear it. Lots of people saying they're quite happy working at home, uh, going on into the future, banning all live events, big public events, and 87% of us say we'll accept local lockdowns being imposed long term. So at the moment, uh, at the end of August, people are saying they are prepared to do what it will take to get us through the virus. We'll see how that plays plays out as we go into winter and the recession that most estimates suggest will reduce Britain's GDP by 10 percentage points this year, um, much more than uh, many other countries, but also much, much more than in the 2008 recession. Overall, the British, though, still say that, uh, you know, they're equivocal about what will happen longer term. Uh, 39% say this is actually going to make us stronger. 46% say it will make the country weaker. So we're not entirely 
doom and gloom. And um, with few people return, expecting life to go back to normal anytime soon, one thing we can expect to see is, of course, an election in America. And uh, whether you're on uh, the Republican or Democratic side of the fence, the American election has global consequences. So I'm going to keep you up to date with my uh, American colleagues polling on this. And I thought one thing to, to look at as we go into the autumn, we've just seen the, uh, the two parties have their, their conventions, is that although Donald Trump is behind in the polls, about 7% behind in the popular vote, which of course he also lost in 2016, but won in the Electoral College, but nevertheless, in terms of his approval ratings, they've really changed very, very little, despite incredibly dramatic events in America with Black Lives Matter and the government's response to that, with the coronavirus killing many more people than most other countries and the government's handling of that in North America. Uh, overall, Donald Trump's ratings just seem to be pretty much unchanged, and it's a reminder of the partisanship that has descended on America. So we will see what happens in November, but uh, Donald Trump has 41% of Americans who approve of the way he's doing his job. Uh, back in Britain, we have in September our virtual Future of Research series. We're running 12 different events looking at things like behavioural science, virtual reality, uh, all of the new online tools that have been adopted during the crisis to make research smarter, stronger, and I think actually often fitter. And we've got ex really interesting external speakers from Watchers of Switzerland, Sega, uh, the train company of Anti West Coast, uh, people from across the public sector talking about the impacts uh, of the coronavirus on the research, but also how it's led us to be more innovative as an industry. So do sign up for one of those free events there. Um, and elsewhere, we've looked at perceptions of leader competence uh, around the world uh, with some uh, academics. Uh, that's a really interesting study because, of course, it shows that coherence uh, consistency and empathy are key things if you want to maintain perceptions of your competence. Uh, Donald Trump didn't do too well there, perhaps not surprisingly to people who don't like him, uh, which is 76% of the British. And finally, we've looked at access to female health services and also driverless cars. Where are they now when lots of people are scared of using public transport? Are we more enthusiastic about them or less? That's all for now. I'll talk to you again in September. Thank you.